Myths of the Oppressors. This really is, I think, one of the best uh, summary sections in all of Pedagogy of the Oppressed. It's uh, quite a bit into the book already. This is in Chapter 4. In my book, it's on page 135. Uh, that probably isn't the same as yours, but it is in Chapter 4, so uh, take a look there. Chapter 4. Uh, you'll see this listed in paragraph form. It's not listed in uh, numbered form like this, but that's okay. And I, I just want to take some time literally to go through each of these to some degree. Um, so first of all, oh, and of course I want to make a comment based on uh, how we might think of this from an education perspective and a comparative education pers perspective in particular. So the first one, oppressed order is a, a free society. The oppressive order is a free society. This idea that we are free somehow in society. Remember, Paul Freire is making the argument that none of us are free. Neither the oppressed nor the oppressors are free. We are all dehumanized by the constraining of freedom. So formal education systems around the world are in and of themselves an oppressive order because they constrain freedom. Right? There are particular rules that must be followed and those rules are often determined by dominant groups. Secondly, all men are free <clears throat> to work where they wish that if they don't like their boss they can leave him and look for another job. <clears throat> you may remember, <clears throat> excuse me, that in the uh, United Nations uh, Declaration of Human Rights, Article 26, there was a, a point in there that talked about parents being free to choose uh, where their children go to school. Right? This idea of a parent's choice uh, was very important to the Declaration of Human Rights. But what Freire is saying is that, again, that's a myth. Parents don't necessarily have a, a choice about where their students go. Think of it this way. Um, <clears throat> even if there is, let's say, a voucher system it, for a formal school uh, that allows parents to select a different school for their children and then they can transfer the money that they would have had to spend in one school to another. That's often the system of choice that's proposed nowadays. Is that truly parental choice? Is that truly a choice to go to school where you want? Well, not really. Do you know why? It could be for very practical reasons. Maybe it just doesn't make sense for a student to have to travel across town to go to school at the rich school or the school in the good neighborhood. But even beyond that, the, the, the argument here is that those schools that are uh, determined to be of the highest quality or the most attractive are going to be the most attractive, not because they're the best fit for students, but often because they're the ones that fit their students into the oppressor society the best. Right? They're going to be the predominantly wealthy or the predominantly white or the predominantly, you know, um, whatever uh, schools. Right. Thirdly, that whatever order, the oppressive order in particular, respects human rights and is therefore worthy of esteem. Now, one of the interesting things here is that the rhetoric of human rights, rhetoric, sorry about my handwriting, that's an R up front, the rhetoric of human rights is going to be replete throughout education documents and policies. And, and in fact, again, UN Declaration of Human Rights Article 26 says right out that education is a human right and that all people should have access to it. The myth of meritocracy. You may have, uh, if you've been watching any of the political campaign, you may have heard Elizabeth Warren say that the system is rigged. In other words, she said, we do not have a meritocracy. We do not have a system where if you work hard enough, if you're industrious enough, if you apply yourself enough, you can become great or you can excel at school. Um, the argument is that that is a myth that has been set up to reproduce the unequal system that we have now. In other words, it, it, it manufactures consent, remember earlier, because it suggests that, well, if you didn't excel in school, or if you didn't uh, persist through to college, or if you didn't achieve whatever success factor has been deemed to be, uh, you know, uh, uh, good, then it's your own fault 
because you didn't work hard enough or you didn't deserve it. Right? That is, that is uh, absolutely the message that is often sent. And so Freire is saying that's a myth. Um, let me just skip down to six. The universal right of education when all of the Brazilian children, remember he's based in Brazil, who enter primary schools are only a tiny fraction ever reach the university. Right? He's saying that there is no universal right of education because not everyone can complete the system to its full extent. Right? The equality of all men, I've got an A that's out of place there, equality of all men when the question, do you know who you're talking to, is still current among us. In other words, the fact that we treat each other with different language symbols. Right. Spelling language in a bad way. There we go. The heroism of the oppressor classes as defenders of Western Christian civilization against materialist barbarism. The idea that there is a liberator and there is a defender in the oppressor class. That's a myth. The idea that there is charity and generosity of the elites, that's a myth. The idea that dominant elites recognize their duties, in other words, they are, uh, there's a, an idea of paternalism that pervades these myths. All right, so we have all of these myths. All of these myths will in some way uh, suggest that uh, there are well, let me get my ink color changed. That there are, and I, I want to point at myth 13 because it sums up the meritocracy thing. That it is because of the industriousness of the oppressors and the laziness and dishonesty of the oppressed that one does better than the other. And that from an education perspective, the myth would be that this is true in education as well. Right? And so what Freire is trying to do is to tip this on its head and say, no, 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 no. These are the things that we have been taught, either overtly or covertly, through our educational curriculum, through our educational system, through our culture of education. And what we learned from Schriever a couple of videos ago with the, the global and local dichotomy or conflict or paradox was that we have, uh, if, we, if we take Freire seriously, we have a global culture of education, a global model of education that is completely based in the ideology of the oppressors, all of these things that Freire has just listed on both of these sides. But that what Freire is saying is that that model is set up to establish and reproduce the oppressor state, the oppressive order, and that we have to recognize that that is a false order and that it, it, it may seem to advantage one group or another, but it actually dehumanizes everybody. And for that reason, it has to be eliminated.